Welcome back, folks. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and today I'm going to be doing a mock draft following what could be the Rams' last move until the NFL draft. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and of course, uh, follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. Let's dive into it. So, we are doing a mock draft today. The sole purpose of doing it, even though I just did one the other day on Bleacher Report, um, there was big news. The Rams got their starting cornerback. They went out and got Tredavious White. For better or for worse, regardless of how you feel, and I'm definitely a little concerned, not only about the injuries, but him coming back to, you know, full speed and everything. Um, I think they might be done in free agency. There's a chance they do some things after the draft, but until the draft, I think they're good as gold. Um, I, I mean, personally, I would do something else, but, you know, like getting a guy like Carl Lawson, making it less obvious you're going to draft an edge defender for everybody else drafting. Um, <clears throat> what else would I do? Oh, I would sign uh, John Johnson the third, but I'm sure that'll happen after the draft. I can't see him not returning. I mean, I, I think they would probably want him back. So we're going to start off here 19th overall. And yeah, I'm just going to leave this stuff alone. Well, yeah, I'll leave that alone. Cool. So, what do we want to do? Well, right out of the gate, I think this is a trade. So, so this is a draft that I would do. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a separate video, a draft that I could see them doing it, but this is a draft that I am going to do this time around based on the information we now have, uh, you know, going out and getting Tredavious white and all that. So, I'm going to have the Rams trade up here. Let's start the draft here on slow so we can kind of just read the room a little bit. So we could pause this at some point. Caleb, Jaden Daniels, probably, yeah. So three quarterbacks off the board. Marvin Harrison Jr. is gone. Roma Dunze is gone. That sucks. Malik Neighbors is gone. So Joe Alt is gone here, um, which sucks. I, I don't, I don't love that. With that said, since the Rams have put themselves into a little bit of a bind here, and they're gonna need to draft an edge defender, and this is just really the way it, it's gonna be. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna trade up here. I might even entertain trading down. So Dallas Turner goes off the board at eight. I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but so seeing these guys go is painful, but I, I think we're just going to roll with it. Verse is off the board at 13. And there's Murphy. Latu, you could have traded up for However, there's upside that I like. First off, Quinya Mitchell being there really makes this difficult. Um, Amarius Mims being there makes this difficult. So I don't know how much he's going to fall here, right? I hope he does. And I'm going to run the risk that he does. So this could absolutely backfire. Now, I want to see what are they going to offer here? To move down, are they going to give me 58? No. Give me 88? Yes. So we're going to offer this trade. They're going to accept it. Now let's see what happens here. Okay. So it worked out. Um, we snagged another third round pick and I am going to take a guy that they're saying is a reach. I don't think he'll be a reach come draft. I'm going to go with Chop Robinson here. The Rams are getting a guy in Chop Robinson can, that can come out and right away he is going to be a game changer in my opinion. Um, he can start day one. I think he's got 
a lot of upside. I mean, let's go back. Can we even do that? Yeah, so Chop Robinson at pick 25. You look at the pass rush win rate, 20.9%. That's one of the highest in the country. Run defense is there, pass rush grade, all of that. Run stop rate isn't the best. This is about average. That's okay. That's Byron Young right there coming out of Tennessee. Um, this is what PFF is talking about. Six foot three, 250 pound uh, edge defender. By the way, 21 years old, so a little bit on the younger side. Look at this part right here. Robinson is alien like. He's an alien like athlete, has some jaw dropping plays. He could fire off the line, get in the backfield with ease. However, outside of the first step in fast hands, he is an incomplete pass rusher. See, this is the thing, okay? I am not concerned about him being an incomplete pass rusher. You are getting a guy that has elite level traits. You know, this team has coaching. I, I'm not concerned about him developing. What I want is that quick first step immediately going to threaten the pocket. You need that. Donald is gone. So you're going to get that. Regardless of his lack of polish, Robinson is a gifted player athletically, likely on a level that is top of the class. A lot of what leaves you wanting more from Robinson is coachable. Unlocking that is the key for him to go from a boom or bust athlete to a dominant edge defender. And to me, he kind of reminds me, not the same athlete necessarily because like the build is different. He kind of reminds me of Daniil Hunter. If you don't remember, Daniil Hunter coming out of LSU wasn't a overpowering guy. Didn't have a ton of production. And that's the biggest knock on him. Well, Chop didn't have a ton of production, right? He had three sacks last year, five sacks in 2022, and only two in 2021. I don't care about any of that. The reason being sacks don't matter at the next level. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the guy who has 20 sacks in college is going to have 20 at the next level. It doesn't always work that way. It actually never works that way. So chop Robinson here, moving down, being able to take the 88th pick in the third round away from the Packers, move down and get chop Robinson You've now solidified a position of need by going out and getting a edge defender could, that could end up being a superstar. Okay. And here's the thing. If you trust the Rams coaching staff, then you think this is a good move. If you don't trust the Rams coaching staff, then you're upset. You selected a boomer bus player at 25. Personally, for me, I don't agree with this ranking system. I see a lot of mock drafts have him in the second round. He has elite level traits. He is not going in the second round. He is going on day one, and there's a chance that he'll be going to the Rams. So I like him at pick 25 here. Now, as you guys know, I'm a big, big believer in going out and getting a franchise left tackle. However, we did not grab one in the first round. We did not trade up like I've been saying. Why is that? Well, I adapt as the Rams go on, right? And what I mean by that is as I learn more knowledge, it's not that I'm saying that I was wrong. It's not that I'm saying that I have moved on. It's not that I'm saying that I necessarily have changed my opinion. It's that I'm forming somewhat of a new opinion to try to be as accurate as possible based on the findings and the information we now possess. And what we do possess and what we now realize, of course, is that the Rams have not addressed the edge defender spot. They have Michael Hoyt, who they've said they're comfortable with starting as of last year. They have Byron Young. They need another guy. So we went out and got Chop Robinson. At pick 52 here, what are we looking at? Well, I think there are different ways you can go. If you want to double dip on Penn State edge defenders, that's an interesting uh, thing there. However, I'm going to go with a guy who's not right on top of this list, but I think he's going to pan out. And this is Rook Ohoro Horo. Um, I totally probably butchered that name. Or Horo Horo. I, I, yeah, like I said, probably butchered the name. But he is one of my guys in this draft. Okay, versatile defensive lineman, high floor player, defensive end or defensive tackle, needs to develop technical pass rush moves to be more than a rotational player at the next level. This guy can come in, in my opinion. I think he's going to be really good. Um, you know, you look at his ability in the run game, also in the pass rush area of his game. I think he's going to be a much better pro. I think the Rams can coach him up. I think he's got a lot uh, to work with there. 
And again, you go back and you look and they say high floor. This guy's also 22. It's not like he's a 24, 25 year old. So I think that there is a chance that he could really develop into something, uh, you know, at the next level. So I like Rook here at pick 52. We're going to go with Rook. And so, of course, we move down the board here. And with the Rams already, you got your edge defender. You got your interior defensive lineman. Now what are you going to do? Well, I think there are a few different directions they could go in. I think some people are going to want Jalen Wright here. You see the gap grade. That's obvious. The elusive rating, the zone, the rushing. He's certainly something that I'm keeping an eye on because Wright is an NFL caliber athlete for the running back position. Obviously, this is somebody that has that deep speed, can break away. And that's something that matters at the next level. Johnny Wilson is another guy that's intriguing here. So with that said, where do we want to go here? Well, I actually think that the Rams could go in the direction of Jalen Wright, adding that home run threat and, of course, spelling, uh, you know, our friend Kyron Williams in the backfield. 210-511, and he's got that breakaway speed. He's not even 21 yet. So that's something to keep in mind. I could also see them going with a Johnny Wilson here, a six, seven wide receiver out of Florida state. Wouldn't rule that out either. Um, I could see him go with Kinchins out of Miami. I could see him go with Patrick Paul out of Houston developing him. I have them going in this direction. This, this is what I would do. I actually like Brendan rice here. There's a reason for it. His separation. Well, you know how the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, of course, you know, Jerry Rice, of course, being his, you know, father and everything. Um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree with him. No. Here's the thing, Bre- Brendan Rice. He has this ability to separate, not on the level of his father, but he's one of the best separators in the class. Okay. He is such a phenomenal route runner. So I feel like at that six foot three frame, the speed's there. I like him for the Rams here. I think they're going to go receiver. I think it makes sense. We have the 88th pick from that trade down. So what are we going to do here? Well, we see Jalen Wright went off the board. That's a shame. Um, But it is okay because we're going to go out and we are going to add Dominic Pooney who could play tackle guard and center all over the the offensive line, we're going to get him here at 88. We still have another pick in the third round here at 99. And this is going to be tough. Uh, this is going to, this is not going to be an easy one here, but I think I know where we're going to go here. I think we're going to go with Kalen Bullock. We'll see in a sec. I like Kalen Bullock. Um, I think that Bullock would be really good in this scheme. And, while I don't love him in the run game, I definitely like him, his athleticism, obviously the range on full display. He's not like a really strong safety, but to add him at the end of the third round is I think the direction we're going to go in here. I do believe we're going to go in that direction. Although there are some other guys here, Jarvis Brownlee, Cam Hart from Notre Dame, good size. That's an interesting one. He's not going to be available because the Rams don't have a fourth round pick. So I am going to go with Kalen Bullock here. Rams had another safety here and they're, they're stacked. I mean, you talk about Bullock and Lake and Carl and yeast and you know, uh, what's his name? Totally blanking on his name, but Jason Taylor, the second, there we go. So now you're feeling pretty good about that, right? You've taken care of the defense for the most part. You added a weapon in the offense in Brendan rice. Um, So now pick 154. What direction are we going to go into? Oh, and you also got Dominic Pooney. So you can't forget about that. You got a guy that's going to add some value there in inside uh, on the offensive line. You know, a tackle, guard, center, really like that. So now at 154, 155, we're going to go in the different direction here. So we already went safety because Bullock was available there. Let's see what Makai Wingo brings to the table. Short arms, legs. 
Uh, I like that that quickness. Um, I like Malik Mustafa a ton. However, we just went with a safety earlier. So let's stick here. We're going to go cornerback. We're going to go with Dwight McLaughlin here out of Arkansas. I'm a big fan of his game, as I've said over and over and over again. I feel really good about that. Theo Johnson is a crazy athlete. So this is an intriguing one. Do you add him to the list here? They have Colby Parkinson. I'm going to pass. I like Colby Parkinson, Davis Allen, Tyler Higby. I don't think they need to draft a tight end there. However, what I would like to see them do is grab a running back to spell Kyron Williams. And the best running back, honestly, out there might be Dylan Laub out of New Hampshire. The reason I say that is not only is he good in the zone and in gap, right? But the thing about him is that he is going to be able to be utilized as a receiving back. He's 208 pounds, five foot 10. I like Laub here in the fifth round. He could go higher, but I like him and McLaughlin there. Now you still have plenty of picks left over. If you're the Rams, I don't know why this isn't going faster. Uh, plenty of picks left over. If you're the Rams, try to fill this out as best as you can. So a guy that I think would be really nice on the Rams. He's a hardworking guy. Just, I mean, first off, if you've watched this channel before, if you watch downtown Ramsey, you know who I'm talking about. I like Brennan Jackson a lot. I think this is somebody high motor guy would make a lot of sense for the Rams. Somebody that they would fall in love with six foot four, two sixty four. adding Brennan Jackson seems like the best option here. I like that move. And then at pick two Oh nine, which direction do we want to go? And I'm going to go with Tan- uh, Tanner Bordellini here. So you cover a guy that basically can play tackle guard and center in Dominic Pooney. And now you go out and you get Bordellini. Okay, so really like that pick there. And now we're looking, is there anybody interesting here that we want to go any direction? And I mean, to be honest with you, this isn't like, there's not a ton of guys I'm super interested in at this point in the draft. Um, With that said, I would not be against sticking with some of the guys that we had in the previous mock draft going with Joshua Cephas can make plays after the catch can break tackles. And then I actually am going to double dip on running back here. You have Ronnie rivers. Yes. You have Zach Evans. Yes. I want to make the running back room as best as possible. Kyron Williams is the guy and he's going to have a significant workload. However, you're also trying to keep him intact you're trying to get him to last 17 games soon to be 18 whenever that happens so with that said i'm gonna go with isaiah davis here with laub and make that a fun running back room you know talk about all those guys fighting for roster spots does ronnie make it does zach evans make it who knows but i like the idea of pitting them all against each other and last but not least here we're gonna go with a edge defender. So another edge defender here that is way down here. But the reason being the reason I'm going with him and I'm still looking for him here is that I think he could be a nice situational guy. And that's Steve Linton uh, out of Texas tech. I think he'd be a really nice fit here at the same time. Cedric Johnson is intriguing. Of course, Um, this is another one of those, you know, you draft him, you stash him, you develop him, you see what happens, but I kind of like the idea of going after Linton who could be that kind of situational rusher at the same time. I'm not about to forget to pick a kicker folks. I was totally just messing with you right then and there. So I didn't forget to pick a kicker. They're all still here. I don't know if they'll all last. I'm going to go with Joshua Cardi out of Stanford And there you have it for the Rams mock draft updated. But this is what I would do based on what we watched today. Well, whenever you're watching this, this is after Tredavious White was signed. So again, only one trade. You didn't want to go crazy. You could totally argue. Yeah, Les Snead's going to trade a bunch and I'm all for it. Um, I would love to trade up and get a blue chip prospect. However, 
Chop Robinson could end up being that blue chip prospect. So I know they gave me a B minus. I'm going to say they don't know what they're talking about. I think Robinson's 100% going in the first round. And if he goes to at 25 to the Rams, you should feel very good about that. We made that trade with the Packers in case you missed it. 19, traded down to 25, and added a third round pick in return. Chop Robinson comes in right away, and he doesn't have to start right away either because you have Michael Hoyt. So you can ease him into workloads. But I do think with a preseason, with a training camp, I think Chop Robinson can start right away. I think he's going to start right away in this scenario next to Byron Young, and I think immediately the Rams' pass rush is going to be better off the edge than it was last season. Rook, he's a guy right here who can start right away as well. I understand they said eh, he's not quite ready. I beg to differ. I think Rook could start right away next to Bobby Brown the third and Kobe Turner and have a very good rookie campaign. So I like Rook and Chop to start right away. Brendan Rice does not have to start right away. And they gave us a C minus for this one. They really didn't like this pick. Here's the deal. Brendan Rice is an outstanding route runner. He's got great size for the position. And this is somebody who's going at least in the third round. So miss me with the C minus first off. And the second thing I'll say is that Brendan Rice is in a great position here with the Rams. Okay. He doesn't have to start right away. They have Puka Nakua. They have Cooper Cup. They have Tutu Atwell. They have Demarcus Robinson. Although I do think Tutu Atwell would get traded in a scenario like that. Brendan Rice brings a level of size to the position that they don't have all over the place. Uh, so I do like that. And he also brings a four-year guy. So now, you know, 2-2 two, two on a, on one-year deal left on, well, one year left on his deal. Skoranek, one year left on his deal. And Demarcus Robinson with one year left. You only have Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup that are under contract in 2025. So that is the whole point of drafting a receiver. It's not just for the here and now, it's for next year. However, with that said, Cooper Cup's had a hard time staying healthy. Tutu Atwell, who knows? I Personally, I'd love Tutu Atwell back. I'd love to see him get an opportunity. I think this guy can work in this league. The Rams, I don't know. Demarcus Robinson, he only played the end of the last season. It seems like they're very high on him, but we've seen him be very high on Van Jefferson, move on from him. We see him be very high on a player, move on from them. So I wouldn't be surprised. Brendan Rice has a shot in this scenario to play meaningful snaps, but without the pressure of being thrown into the fire like Puka Nakua. That said, I think he's in a great position if he goes to the Rams here at 83. Now at 88, again, we decide to go with Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. Does not have to start right away, but could push for playing time with Alaric Jackson, depending on how well he looks. Um, I think Pooney's versatility combined with Nopum's versatility and you talk about War McClendon and just the way that this offensive line, they like to cross train these players. And of course, you know, we added Tanner Bordellini later on. I think Pooney offers a huge amount of versatility and this is somebody that could start right away if need be so I think Pooney could end up being the starting left tackle for the Rams so I like this pick here uh, they gave us a B and rightfully so the next one here is Kalen Bullock and now Bullock is not somebody or Bullock Bullock is not somebody that necessarily is going to come in and just lay the wood. He's not somebody that is going to have hard hit after hard hit. He's somebody that has great range. At six foot three, he's got great size. So I like Kalen Bullock a lot based on where the Rams are at. They have two guys that can lay the wood, okay? Russ Yeast has hit hard before he's got range. Quentin Lake can hit hard. And of course, Cam Curl can really hit hard. So you got some hard hitters in the back end of the secondary, but now you also add some more depth in the secondary. I still think this allows them to go after John Johnson if they really want to. Uh, hopefully they do. I'm a big fan of JJ. But if they don't, then Bullock is right in there. You have Yeast. You have Lake, you have Cameron Curl. You're feeling good about that room. So 
they went with Bullock there. And this this is definitely a best player available selection. I was not planning on taking a safety this high. However, if he's there at 99, I think the Rams would definitely consider it. No pick in the fourth round. I would assume the Rams will probably change that. They'll probably switch out of this 99th pick and move down and get a fourth round pick. However, we did not do that this time around. We stuck with what we had for the rest of the draft. And we drafted Dwight McLaughlin out of Arkansas in at 154, just like we did in the last mock draft. B minus, big fan of Dwight. I think he's one of the better corners in the in in the draft. And I think he's somebody that could be a ball hawker at the next level. So now that you have Tredavious White and you have Darius Williams and you have Kobe Durant and you have Trey Tomlinson and you have Darion Kendrick, not many would expect the Rams to go after a cornerback super high. However, I do think getting good value in the fifth round here in McLaughlin still gives you that flexibility. If a Tredavious White goes down or something like that, then now you have Dwight McLaughlin there, who I think has a higher floor than most corners in this draft. Next up, you have Dylan Laub in back-to-back picks. They gave us a C. They don't know what they're talking about. Laub's ability in the receiving game and, of course, his home run hitting ability is what leads me to believe this is a pick that the Rams could make. He's going to add an extra element to the offense to go with Kyron Williams. So I like this pick here because you always have to keep in mind, Kyron Williams is not indestructible. We've seen him now get hurt twice in the NFL. Don't want to see it again. Actually, more than twice in the NFL. We don't want to see it again. Dylan Laub makes a lot of sense there. At edge in the sixth round, 196, we went with Brendan Jackson, a guy that I think could end up being really good, a uh, better pro. And the reason is he's coachable. He instantly just lights up a room that he's in. And when you talk about a guy like Brennan Jackson, that 110%, that motor that's always running, um, that's the type of guy that would fit into a we not me culture. So this is somebody that I could see drafted in the sixth round, but ends up being kind of a draft gem here for the Rams. They gave us a B plus, so maybe they see what we see. Uh, I took Brennan Jackson there. I picked 209, took Tanner Bordellini. Out of Wisconsin, the Rams have drafted Wisconsin players Logan Bruss, Rob Havenstein, and David Edwards. Would not shock me in the slightest if they drafted another one in Bordellini. Bordellini has a ton of athleticism. Very, very athletic center. Can get to the second level. And I just see this guy as somebody that they could grab here late in the draft uh, if he doesn't go earlier. And he probably should. But he was there for me in the sixth round. And so we decided to go with him. And really, the way I see it is if he is available there in the sixth round, the Rams are able to add him. He is a great backup center that could be a legitimate starting center. So if they decide to pull the plug on Steve Avila at center for whatever reason and say Jonah Jackson doesn't pan out or Kevin Dotson doesn't pan out, whatever, and they can move Avila back to guard and then they have Bordellini that can play center, I like that. I like having backup plans. I understand some people don't. You fall in your backup plan, all of that. I think it's different with football. I think you got to have, you, you got to think one step ahead. This is thinking one step ahead. At pick 213, the Rams had another receiver, Joshua Cephas. Big fan of his out of UTSA. I like his ability after the catch. I like his ability to break tackles. He's a solid receiver in his own right. A lot of yards there at UTSA, Texas San Antonio. They gave us a B minus. I think they're right on that one. At uh, pick 217, I had the Rams double dipping on running backs. I'm going after Isaiah Davis to make the running back room a little bit more competitive. I like this because Davis is a different body type than a Dylan Laub, than, uh, you know, a Ronnie Rivers, a Kyron Williams, a Zach Evans. So I think offering a different look in the running back room um, is the way to go. Plus, keep in mind, these sixth and seventh rounders are never guaranteed to make the roster. So you're drafting these guys with the hope of them, um, you know, giving you the best options. And when you have to cut good players, it means your team is a good team. So don't forget about that. And last but not least, I kind of toyed with you guys. I finally took a kicker. I forgot to in the last mock draft. I did it this time. Joshua Cardi out of Stanford. Okay. Cardi, in my opinion, is the more accurate. He's the more consistent and he's the best kicker in this draft. Will they go after him? 
I don't know. Will he be there in the seventh round? I don't know, but he was there this time. So we're going to say that Josh Cardi is the Rams new kicker. They gave us a B personally. I think it's a really good uh, draft. I would probably say an A minus I did with what I could. Maybe there were points where I was like, eh, I don't know if I'll go that route or, you know, whatever, but I really like chop Rook, Brendan Rice, Dominic Pooney, Kalen Bullock and Dwight McLaughlin. Those are ones that I feel rock solid about as well as Dylan Laub. The rest I really like, um, but you know, obviously I was playing around with it with the board. So let me know. Uh, give me a grade in the comments section. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. I know a lot of people pushed back and said, you didn't draft, you, you didn't adjust um, or rather address the edge position uh, you know, early enough. You didn't take a kicker. People didn't like my last mock. It's fine. And I don't know if people like this mock, but I understand that some are going to say that this is a reach. I'm telling you, by the time that the draft kicks off, Chop Robinson's name will be rumored to be drafted on night one. That's just the way it is. I've done this thing plenty of times. I've been covering six, seven, eight drafts now. And I can tell you, I've seen players like him, the mock drafts, the draft Twitters, whatever. They're just not, they're not on it. And you you get rug pulled if you're not ready. And then draft comes and a guy like that goes in the first round. You're like, oh, he was such a reach. And then he's not a reach. It's just, you were behind the eight ball. So I've been there. Trust me. So I like Chop Robinson there to headline this draft. What are your thoughts though? Layatu Latu am not against him at all, but I wasn't going to trade up. And in this scenario, I saw an opportunity with Chop being lower on this board that I could trade down and hopefully land him at 25. And I would love to draft a franchise tackle, but again, the Rams did not address edge. They did not do it. So I'm doing it for them in this draft. Let me know what you guys think. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. I will see you guys in the next video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.